we excited to worship God this morning and we encourage you guys to sing along to worship with us this morning. So come on, let's worship God together. Don't lose heart, oh my soul, oh my soul Don't give up, there is hope, there is always hope And there is peace in this storm, in this storm Lord, don't forget, He is Lord, He is Lord Shout of praise There is a lion roaring Jesus the King of glory So lift your eyes Stand in no, stand in no There is one, only one Where my help comes from There is the King of glory
Should I ever need reminding Of how I've been set free There is a cross that bears the burden For another die for me There is another in the Left for death beneath the waters I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore And should I fall in the space between What remains of me and this reckoning Either way I will bow to the things of this world
Count the joy can every bad Cause I know that's where you'll be Well, thanks, worship team. What a great reminder that Jesus will never leave us, that He's with us. And church, for many of us, we know that today is a special day, a significant day in our Christian calendar. It's Pentecost, which really um, describes the first time or reminds us of the first time that the Christians received the Holy Spirit. And I'm gonna read you just some of the accounts out of the book of Acts chapter two about them receiving the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, it says this, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And church, I think for many Christians, they believe in Jesus, have a relationship with the Father. But perhaps when it comes to the Holy Spirit, like uh, Francis Chan says, it's almost like He's the forgotten God. And I think maybe that's because some of us maybe don't understand the person of the Holy Spirit, who He is and the work He wants to do in our lives. And perhaps maybe some of us have had a... um, strange experience or a bad experience with the Holy Spirit. And can I suggest that maybe it's the packaging and not the Holy Spirit itself that you have rejected. And today we wanna encourage you to open up your hearts to the Holy Spirit, to ask the Holy Spirit to perhaps even come and fill you. Jesus Himself in John chapter 16, verse seven said, it's better for me to go back to heaven so that each of you would have the Holy Spirit. And I wanna just share two thoughts that hopefully will encourage you about the work of the Holy Spirit and why we need the Holy Spirit. The first is that the Holy Spirit brings power. And if, if the Pentecost experience could be summed up in one word, it would be power. That God wants to give you His power. That for each of us, we need the power of God in our lives so that our lives can be transformed to look more like the image of God. We can't do that on our own. In fact, there's a great saying that says that the Holy Spirit doesn't make me better than you. It makes me better than me. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to transform us into the image of God. And not just that, but that the power would come and enable us to live supernatural lives, lives that are not just natural and normal, but ones that are filled with the power of God, miracles and signs and wonders and healing. And so the first is that the Holy Spirit wants to give us power. The second is that the Holy Spirit wants to empower us to be on mission. All of us have been given the Great Commission As Christians, we've been told to take the gospel, the good news to everybody, to our friends, our family, our colleagues, and to the ends of the earth. And Acts chapter one, verse eight says this, that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and that you shall be my witness to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Church, we cannot be a witness of Jesus without the power of the Holy Spirit. And on Pentecost, it was like there was an explosion of the gospel. 3,000 people got saved on that day and from that day, the gospel has gone to the ends of the earth. And I personally am so grateful for a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit, His persuasion, His power, His promptings. I'm grateful for His care and His concern, His counsel and His conviction. And perhaps today you're listening to this thought and going, hey, you know what? I don't actually know the Holy Spirit. I've never received the Holy Spirit. There are actually accounts in the Bible where people knew Jesus, but they did not know the Holy Spirit. And it really is simple for all of us. We can just take a moment right where we are now to ask the Holy Spirit to come and fill us, to come and take up permanent residence in our heart. And we're gonna pray a prayer in a moment, asking the Holy Spirit to do that. And perhaps some of you are in the room and you had an encounter with the Holy Spirit, but right now you're running on empty. It's just fumes. And you too can pray a prayer this morning saying, God, Holy Spirit, I need you to fill me. And so if you wouldn't mind right now, we're gonna pray a very simple prayer together. Father, thank you for your Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are a gift to us. And right now we ask you to come and fill us, to take up permanent residence in our lives. Thank you for the personal relationship we can have with you. 
in Jesus' name. And hey, church, we're gonna take a moment now to sing a beautiful song about asking the Holy Spirit to come and have His way in our lives. So come on, why don't you take a moment wherever you're at, maybe you wanna close your eyes and just ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. that you've given us. And God, we just pray that you would have your way, your kingdom come, your will be done in and through us. Church, we pray that you encountered God today. And won't you keep your eyes up on the screens for our announcements.
Well, thank you so much to the worship team. That was so awesome. I love the songs that we did today. And thank you to Colin for sharing that awesome um, little moment on the Pentecost. Yeah, it's awesome that it's Pentecost. And at Pentecost, we saw the Holy Spirit fall down in power. And we are trusting that the Holy Spirit would be at work in your life in every situation right now. And uh, it was so cool to worship. It was a vibe, hey? It was. Yeah. It was so much King fun. of glory. It just gets you clapping, you know? It's quite wow. A, just like, That's... or Lauren. That's very Lauren. good. It's a Lauren Gifford there. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. But anyway, welcome from us. You guys haven't seen us yet today. We just want to give a shout out to all of you who are watching. Thank you for joining us for online church today. Yeah, we got a few announcements. And the first announcement is this, and this is for all the youth guys, that we are going to be hanging out on Friday night. So we're going to communicate what time that is and what platform it is. Um, but we really miss you guys, if yes, we're honest. That's I'm wild. so excited to start youth again, even if it's online. Yeah. We just miss you guys. We want to have fun and just be silly. And don't mute your video. Like everyone is doing that. Like Mute your video? Yeah, you mute your video on Zoom or whatever. And then no, you people mute your voice. You don't mute a video. Of course you mute your video. You stop a video. You stop a video. Yeah. Okay, we want to see your faces. We want to see your faces, basically. That's say. what we're saying. Yeah. <laughs> we want to see your faces. So on Friday night, we'll be hanging out. So come and check us out. And uh, we'll probably do, maybe do a house party. Maybe we'll do yes. a little Zoom session and play a few games. It's going to be really fun. Night. A quiz night. A quiz night. Um, it won't be on the Bible. Don't worry. It won't be, yeah. And obviously you guys have been doing online school. So we want to give you just a bit of a break from that, yes, that, from your, that your online life would uh, kind of be a bit more fun uh, exactly. from Friday night. So. Exactly. So check out all of our social media platforms for more information on that. But remember Friday nights, that is when the youth is going to hang awesome. out. Awesome. And then we have Kids Church happening as we do every Sunday. Our awesome team have done some amazing things for the lessons this week. So make sure that you tag us in everything that you are doing at home with the kids. We would love to see that. That's awesome. And then the last announcement is that we are starting a new series today, which is really exciting. Yes. And it's going to be it's going to be a really good one. Obviously, it's always good, always. Um, but it's going to be quite fun and, 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 and creative. And, and I think there's a special guest. So one of Tom's very good friends one yes. of Tom's very good friends is going to be joining um, him on stage for a little bit which is really exciting yeah, make sure you look out for him in the weeks to come he's yeah. going to be with us during this whole series but did you say what the series is called the series is called Castaway awesome and it's going to be really fun and um, you're probably thinking of maybe a very famous movie that took place Tom Hanks Tom Hanks Tom, Tom Paxton oh wow <laughs> is Tom Hanks yes. the guest <laughs> Possibly. I don't know if our budget allows that, but we'll we'll, uh, we'll see what we'll we can do. Keep it a surprise. Yeah. yeah, it's a surprise. You'll, awesome. you'll have to watch and see. <laughs> nice. I'm so excited for this series. I think that it really is so relevant for the season that we find ourselves in. So make sure that you lean in and hear what God is wanting to tell you today. Yeah, that's awesome. We quickly want to just share uh, an offering message. And I was reminded today about a scripture from Matthew 6 that says that we should not store up treasures on earth uh, where moths can destroy and thieves can steal, but rather we would store up our treasure in heaven. And um, when you think about it, obviously our money that we have, the resources that we have are a physical thing, an earthly thing in a sense. But what happens when we give is that they become an eternal thing where you bless someone else. It actually enters into eternity where it lasts forever and it blesses that person forever. And um, I think at this time where maybe resources are a little bit tighter and we want to hold on to things, that rather we should let go and kind of invest into eternity, into people's eternity, rather than in the physical things uh, on earth. So I hope that encourages you today. And um, we're going to pop up the zapper code and the banking details. And you guys are welcome to give as you feel led. And we are so grateful for every single person that is giving at this time. Awesome. So we are so excited to hear this message that Tom has had on his heart for us as a church. Um, so let's just welcome him together yeah. and really listen to what he has prepared for us today. So I want to introduce you to a really good friend of mine this morning. And uh, he's going to be a fantastic companion for the next three weeks of our lives. So you better get to know this guy. Uh, he's been an incredible blessing to me the whole way through the lockdown. As um, many of you guys uh, are aware, there's a lot of people that are losing their minds at the moment, but I think I'm okay. 
been talking to this uh, friend of mine. His name's Wilson, and he's uh, he's just he's a great listener. He's a great friend, and uh, I'm happy to loan him out at some point to anybody that really needs some help, um, especially those that are, are feeling like they are caught up in the lockdown blues at the moment, and you need some solid advice. I can't promise you that he's going to uh, be super responsive, but he will listen to everything that you say. Actually, sometimes um, at home, when uh, when my wife uh, wants to talk a lot to me, and I kind of just had a really hectic day, um, I'll sometimes get Wilson out and say, hey, babe, um, maybe you want to talk to Wilson for a little while as well. He's a fantastic listener. <laughs> I'm joking, and, uh, and I better say that, otherwise I might uh, get murdered by my wife. Um, but hey, guys, we're starting a new series this morning called Castaway. And if you've watched the movie Castaway, you'll know exactly what I'm referring to here with Wilson. Um, but essentially what happens is Tom Hanks, who plays the main character in Castaway, gets stranded on an island and for a number of years. And eventually, it's kind of the the story unfolds as he's stuck on this island with nobody and and kind of really just very limited resources, none of the the creature comforts that you'd find at home. And the one thing that he has is this volleyball, a Wilson-branded volleyball that he lands up befriending, painting a face on, And then throughout the movie, he becomes uh, better and better friends with this volleyball. And I I don't know how lockdown has been for you, but let's be honest, I think some of us are losing it a little bit. And uh, if you started talking to a ball like me, then we are definitely praying for you. Um, But Wilson is going to keep us company for the next couple of weeks as we uh, unroll uh, this series called Castaway. And uh, today, on the first installment of Castaway, we're talking about cast your burdens, Cast your burdens, and and obviously, if you've grown up in church, if you've grown up in Sunday school, um, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. Um, the famous, famous scripture from 1 Peter 5, verse 7, that says, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. The old King James or the new King James version say, Cast all your burdens onto him because he cares for you. And so before we get stuck into this morning's sermon, let's open up in prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for your word to us this morning. We thank you, Jesus, for who you are. I thank you for how you're revealing your character, your nature, everything about who you are to us, God. I thank you that no lockdown, no pandemic, nothing in all of heaven and earth could ever stop that process of you revealing who you are to us and who you've called us to be. And so, Lord, I pray for more of that this morning, for your revelation, God. Pray that you'd speak to us this morning, powerfully, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, guys, so I don't know how good you are at receiving gifts. Some people are like world-class professionals at receiving gifts, and some people are really, really bad at receiving gifts. I'm definitely in the uh, latter category. I'm so bad at receiving gifts. If I'd never know what to do. If someone comes up to me and compliments me, or if someone comes up to me and gives me a gift or something and says, hey, you know, I was thinking about you and I bought this and blah, 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 whatever. I'm so, so bad at that, and I always get like, super awkward and I never really know how to respond. If someone comes to me and says, hey, you did really well with this thing or you did really well with that thing, I always kind of just sheepishly go, uh, uh, thank you, I, I, I think, I guess. And I don't know where you might be. There's, there's definitely two categories of people here. Some are professionals at receiving gifts. And what you'll find with the people that are professional at receiving gifts is that they will tell you when it's their birthday. Actually, there was a girl that I used to work with, um, and a wonderful girl, and she might even be watching this. I'm not going to mention her name. But when it was her birthday, she would have a birthday month, not a birthday day. And she would literally roll, you know, kind of uh, build up towards her birthday from the beginning of the month and go walk around the office and tell everybody, hey, it's my birthday coming up on, and I don't, I can't even remember what the date was. So she obviously didn't do that good a job. Well, that, and I'm a guy. Um, but she used to tell everybody from the beginning of the month, hey, it's my birthday month. It's my birthday month. It's my birthday month. And then the week leading up to her birthday, every single day, it would be like, hey, it's my birthday. And there would be cake 
in the office, not just on her birthday, but on every single day leading up to her birthday. And actually, sometimes we would have an after-birthday day as well, the next day. And uh, she's one of those girls that um, was so good at receiving gifts, and obviously her love language must have been gifts. Um, The kind of person that would say, hey, that's a really nice jersey that you're wearing. Um, Can I have it? And for me, because I'm in the other category, that is the strangest thing ever. But some people are professional at receiving gifts. And I want to ask this question this morning when it comes to our walk with Jesus Christ, when it comes to our faith in Him. How good are we at receiving from Jesus? And I will tell you, disclaimer right up front, that I suck at receiving from Jesus. I suck at receiving everything that he has, his goodness, his love, his grace, his mercy, anything that God has to offer me. I'm so bad at allowing him to give that to me. And it's something that I've really struggled with. And it's something that I want to unpack and help us all, especially in the season that we find ourselves in right now. Because if we're ever going to make it as Christians, if we're ever going to live up to everything God called us to do, we got to learn how to cast our anxieties, cast our burdens, cast the things that are weighing us down onto Jesus and allow him to love us, allow him to take these things from us and exchange them for everything that he gives us in return. We're going to be unpacking this. Cast away, cast away. And you know, guys, it's, it's, a, it's a tragedy that this is the place that we find ourselves in as Christians. Because the truth is, when you open up the Word of God, it's impossible not to see that Jesus wants to serve you and me. In fact, He said Himself, I did not come, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give His life, give Himself as a ransom for many. He said in Matthew 6 that we are not to worry about anything. The whole way through Matthew 6, He sets it up and He says, do not worry. Don't worry about today. Do not worry about what you're going to eat. Do not worry about what you're going to drink. Do not worry. This is Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, God himself speaking to us and saying to us, you are not allowed to worry. And then if that isn't enough, he goes a step further in Matthew 11, again, a famous scripture. And he says, come to me, come to me, all of you who are heavy laden and burdened, And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you because my burden is light and my way is easy. He he makes it so obvious in the word that he wants us to allow him to help us with the things that we are struggling with. And we are so bad at doing it. So to break down today's scripture... It comes from, for those people who don't know, famous scripture. And with a song we used to sing in Sunday school, it goes, cast your burdens onto Jesus because he cares for you. I'm sure a lot of people would know that if you grew up in any kind of church. Um, and so we know the scripture well, but to let you know where it's actually from, because it is from the Bible, it's 1 Peter 5 verse 7. And I find it so interesting that Peter spoke about this. And one of the things when I was unpacking the scripture in my study this week, I saw for the first time ever in the scripture, is I think even when we sang that song, I mean, I can't completely remember, but I think we used to do the actions of like, cast your burdens, you know, like you're casting a fishing rod and you, or you're casting a net. And I think that's probably how most people were taught, is that when you, um, you know, you've got to cast your burdens, like you would cast a, a fishing rod to try and catch some fish. But actually, when I started unpacking the scripture and looking at the, the original Greek word for cast and looking where you find it in other places in scripture, I saw something for the first time ever. That word cast is never used when it comes to fishing. Not once. In fact, the very definition of that word isn't really associated with fishing at all. And so I find it so interesting that Peter, the guy who wrote this, who was a fisherman, used the word that we translated as cast but he never meant to be, he never meant it to be uh, uh, interpreted as cast, like you're casting a fishing rod. And why is that? Well, it's very simple. When you cast a fishing rod, there's a direction that you're aiming towards, there's a place that you're trying to cast 
to, that it involves some kind of uh, precision and sort of like aim at what you're casting at. And actually, when you break down this Greek word of cast that he chose to use here, it is totally different. It's not like that at all. It's a completely chaotic word where, where you, there is no precision involved in it at all. Basically, if it was a South African word, it would be chuck, to chuck something, or maybe one step further, we'd even say, if you're an English person, we'd say, hoy. We just hoy. We're going to just hoy this thing. We're just going to chuck it. And essentially what it means is that it's done almost completely, I want to say almost impulsively, that, that we, we would take our burdens, we would take our anxieties. There is no thought process at all. There's no thinking, should I do this? Shouldn't I do this? Where am I going to, how am I going to? None of that's involved. It's actually a pretty chaotic, impulsive word that just means, take it from me. Here it is. I'm throwing it. I don't care. I'm not aiming. I'm not, I'm not trying. Just take it. It's, it's impulsive by nature. And I think that Peter was so intentional by trying to tell us something about that. So often, guys, we have this, we have this relationship with God that is so stagnant and it's so robotic at times and it's so precise and you know we're intentional about putting this thing in place and putting that thing in place and God I'm going to come to you and I'm going to you know say my prayers in the morning and open up the Bible and read this thing and God I'm going to place you know uh, I'm going to place these cares and these burdens at your feet and I think what Peter is trying to do is he's trying to shake us and say to us guys there's so many times in life where what you got to do does not look pretty what you got to do with your faith is not something that is all perfect and measured and kind of structured out. What you got to do with your faith when you're going through hard times, when you're struggling, when you're carrying burdens, when you're carrying loads, the things that are hurting you, the things that are upsetting you. What you got to do in those situations is chuck, hoy, cast, throw your burdens at Jesus. Why? Because he cares for you and he cares for me. It's so obvious that Jesus wants to do this for us. So let me ask this question this morning. Why are we so bad at asking for help? Why are we so bad at asking Jesus for help? Why are we and why am I so bad at coming to Jesus when things are weighing me down, when things are, are, are on my shoulders and I'm, and I'm going through a hard time, why am I so bad at chucking those things at Jesus when he's made it so obvious that that is what he wants to do? And the answer to that is pretty simple and pretty brutal. It's one word. Pride. We have so much pride in our hearts. And it's such a difficult thing for us as human beings to get our heads around that the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the God Most High, would want to serve me, would want to serve you, would want to come into our lives and not just uh, kind of um, control us and, 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 and lord himself over us, but he'd want to come into our lives and he himself would want to lift us up and care for us and take the things that are hurting us from us. It's so difficult for us to get our heads around that. Again, so interesting that Peter was the guy to talk about this because there's an, a famous account just before Jesus died where Peter and the rest of the disciples were having dinner with Jesus and Jesus begins to break bread and he, they have this meal together and Jesus comes to each one of the disciples and he begins to do something that in those days would have been absolutely mind-blowing. We just take it for granted, but it would be mind-blowing in the context of the day. He takes a towel and he puts it around him, and he bends down in front of each disciple one by one, and he begins to wash their feet. And each one of them seemed to be okay with it, except for one guy, Peter. And he said, Lord, never ever will you wash my feet. This is completely wrong. It's supposed to be the other way around. I'm the one who's supposed to serve you. I'm the one who's supposed to kneel before you. I'm the one who's supposed to bow down at your feet. You will never, ever wash my feet. And it's so interesting what Jesus says to him. He says, Peter, if I don't wash your feet, you can have no part of me. If you don't let me wash your feet, you can have no part of me. And of course, Peter being Peter says, well, daughter, 
You know, in that case, if don't just wash my feet, wash my whole body. And Jesus says, you've already had a bath. It's just your feet that are dirty. That's what I need to wash. And guys, listen to me this morning. If we want any part of the kingdom of God, if we want any part of who God has called us to be, if we want any part of Jesus Christ, we have got to put our pride away and we've got to learn how to let Jesus serve us. I know that that for some people, in the context of the way that you've grown up, that almost sounds like heresy, that Jesus would serve you. But listen to what he says to Peter. I'll take this one step further. When Peter writes about this, and we all know verse 7, 1 Peter 5 verse 7, which is cast your burdens onto Jesus. But the verse just before that, in verse 6, says this. So humble yourself under the mighty power of God, and at the right time he will lift you up in honor. Humble yourself, and at the right time he will lift you up. See guys, Jesus said, I have not come to be served, but to serve others. We can only ever really love God. We can only ever really be effective for God when we learn how to throw chaotically, cast, just hoy, chuck, everything that we have at the one who's paid the full price for every one of those things. It's fascinating that in the Bible, this particular piece of scripture seems to almost appear twice, once in the Old Testament and once in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, we find almost the same scripture. It's almost word for word. We find it in Psalms. It's actually almost like Peter was quoting the Psalms when he wrote this in 1 Peter. And in Psalms, it's almost the same, but it's slightly different. This is what it says in Psalms, it says, Psalms 55 verse 22, it says, give your burdens to the Lord and he will take care of you. He will not permit you, he will not permit the godly to slip and fall. So give your burdens to the Lord and he will take care of you. One Peter in the New Testament says, cast your anxiety on him because he cares for you. There's one distinction between those two scriptures. And that is, the one is that he will take care of you, and the other one is that he cares for you. You know, guys, if you've ever been in any meaningful relationship in your life, you will know that the, one of the most fulfilling things that you could possibly do is care for the other person. In fact, if you've ever had to try and care for somebody who didn't ex receive that or didn't accept that care, you will know how that felt. That didn't, felt like, that, that didn't feel like honor. That didn't feel like respect. It didn't feel like that person was loving you. It felt like rejection. When, when your heart's desire is to care for somebody and they don't receive it, that hurts. That hurts. And guys, our God is not a robot. He's not some divine force that is impersonal, that is out there in the middle of nowhere. He's a God who cares for us. The distinction between the Old Testament and the New Testament, Jesus came, put on flesh and bones, came to us, left all the glory of heaven, coming to us because of one reason. He loves and he cares about every single one of us. And when we don't allow God, the King of Kings, and even as I say this, it's hard for me to say this because I'm so bad at it. But guys, when we don't allow God to look after us, to care for us, to take on Him, self, the things that we should be throwing at Him, we hurt Him. We deny Him the very thing He wants to do in our lives. And so to end off today, we're going to do things a little bit different this morning. And uh, I know that this series is come, coming at a time that God is speaking to us about learning how to cast these things on Him. 
to be all that we could ever be. At the right time, he will lift us up if we humble ourselves before him. If we would take the things that are weighing us down, instead of living every single day with them under the weight of all of these things like so many of us do, if we would allow God to take those things from us, where does that leave us, guys? It leaves us in a place that we're free. We're light. We are, are then open and available to take upon ourselves other people's burdens, to help with the work, to do the things that God has genuinely called us to do. So many of us can't even think about doing the things that God has called us to do, about blessing other people, about helping other people, because we're so weighed down with our own anxiety. We're so weighed down with our own worries. We're so weighed down with our own cares. And so this morning, what I want us to do, we're going to go into a song item now that Graydon's going to sing for us. And the song is Take Heart. And as we sing this morning, I want each one of you to get this image in your mind that Jesus is right there with you. He said he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And instead of having an imaginary version of, of this God that we've made up a lot of the time that doesn't even really exist, like my friend Wilson, that we would understand that Jesus is there with you and what he wants to do is care for you. And I'm going to ask you that you would put your pride aside, you would humble yourself before God this morning and allow Jesus to care for you. That means you've got to throw your burdens at him. And I don't know what that's going to look like for you. But let me just tell you, it does not have to be pretty. It does not have to be a sanitized, clean, you know, precise version of casting your rod at Jesus. If you've got to throw your cares at him, then do it. If you've got to shout and get it out and do whatever, do that. If you've got to get on your knees and you've got to just whatever, whatever you have to do, but cast your burdens onto him because he cares about you. Whatever you're facing, whatever is bringing you down right now, whatever you are carrying, that is stopping you from being all that God has called you to be. As we sing this song now, I'm going to ask you to take a moment and to cast this, to chuck this at Jesus, whatever, you find, whatever thing you're going through right now. If you want to close your eyes, you close your eyes. However you want to respond this morning, you do that. a light It burns brighter than the sun He steals the night And casts no shadow There is hope Should oceans rise and mountains fall He never fails So take heart
So I love that song so much. And I love how the song builds and progresses and ends off with these words. It says that all our troubles and all our tears, God, I hope he has, over, he has overcome. All our failures, all of our fear, God, our love, he has overcome. All our heartache, all our pain, God, our healer, he has overcome. All our burdens, all our shame, God, our freedom, he has overcome. All our troubles and all our tears, God, our hope, he has overcome. And guys, I want to say to you this morning as clearly as I possibly can, that there is a God who has overcome every heartache and every pain and every trial and every tribulation and everything you will ever face. Will you be humble enough? Will you be brave enough to live a life where you learn how to let this God into your life, how to let this God love you? Because that's when we can be all he's called us to be. Hey, I want to pray for us this morning. And as we close, I want to invite anybody who might be watching this. I don't know where you are in the world. But I want to invite you into this relationship with Jesus. Into this relationship, not with a fictitious God that maybe we made up. But with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who loves and cares for you. And it's so easy to start that process. All you have to do is you have to ask him to walk with you. You have to ask him to come into your life. The Bible says that he stands at the door and he knocks. He's right there. But it's up to you and me to open the door and to let him in. So I'm going to say a prayer now. And if you want to make that commitment to Jesus today, maybe it's the first time you've ever done it. Or maybe you feel like, you know what? He's been standing at the door and I've been ignoring him. I know who he is but I've been ignoring him for a long time, then I want you to say this prayer after me this morning and to recommit your heart or for maybe for the first time, commit your life to Jesus. If that's you, right where you are, if there's people around you, maybe you can just, everyone can just close their eyes. But if you're on your own and you want to say these words out loud, that's great. Otherwise, you can just say it in silence. And repeat after me. Lord Jesus, today I come to you just as I am. I'm sorry for living life my way. I'm sorry for shutting you out. And this morning, I want to open up my heart. I want to open up my life to you. Thank you for dying for me so that I could walk with you and be in a relationship with you. And this morning, I give you all of my heartache. I give you all of my pain, every anxiety, every burden, every worry. And in you, Lord, I take heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed our first week of the Castaway series. And I thought Tom did really, really well. And I thought it was really cool to meet one of Tom's very good friends. Yes, Wilson. Yeah. Wilson? He's very handsome. Whew. What a looker. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I got the message to kind of bring life to this friend and mm. create him uh, about a day before we needed him. Yeah. So I think that he looks pretty good. Yeah, he's probably based on one of Tom's um, very good friends from, uh, from his childhood. One of his imaginary friends, I think. From his imagination, yes. Yes. <laughs> we're joking, we're joking. We love Tom. We love Tom. We really enjoyed that message. It really was so good. So cool. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop on to Instagram Live and we really wanna encourage you guys to join us on there. Ask questions if you have any questions. Let us know what you thought about the preach today. We are gonna kind of dive a little bit deeper into yeah. it, discuss it a bit more, also just have some fun. It's good to have fun. Maybe post some funny comments. We had some funny stories yes. that were going on during the chat. So I think that was really cool. So much fun. So we will see you over on Instagram Live and next week for church again. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>